Let Reverend Jackson, let me, let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, I wanna, let me ask you a question. I, you can answer any way you want to answer, but, but, but I want to get, I've got some issues here that, you know, that, have been, that we've been discussing. I want to get all this stuff on the table. You have run for the White House twice, 84 and 88. Some of us worked on that campaign. Many of us supported you in those runs for the White House prior to Barack Obama. The notion these days inside of political circles, the notion inside the body politic is that if you're black and you're going to run and win, and many black folk are forced, as you know, to run in districts that are not as black as they used to be. So if you're going to run in a district that ain't black or is not as black as it used to be, Reverend Jackson, you're going to have to run a different kind of campaign. Your name is in every one of these articles. You can't run a campaign like Jesse Jackson ran in 84, 88, they say, if you want to win and get elected. And in these articles, they point out people like Barack Obama, Deval Patrick in Massachusetts, Cory Booker in Newark, New Jersey, Arthur Davis now running for governor in Alabama. These are the names that Adrian Fenty in Washington, D.C. These are the kinds of names that come up and they say, Reverend Jackson, you can't run a campaign talking about a black agenda these days if you're going to win. Well, I, I won Vermont. I, I, I won Michigan, but that's not the deal breaker. I, I'm concerned that even in our passion, because many of us have not talked this out in these last two years, and I hear a lot of the tension between our joy and our pain, the joy of President's victory and the pain of how do we handle the crisis today. We are on the attack today, we. Uh, the latest data is that hate crimes against all minorities are down 19%. It's up against blacks, 8%. Uh, today, when many small towns have lost their farms and their businesses, there are 2.4 million Americans in prison, those have been there a year longer, and 1.2 are African American, and 5,000 are Latino. And they are now counting those blacks in those small town prisons in the census as being citizens of that community. Therefore, they get from our being there, reparation, they get, they get uh, registration, representation, and they get resources. Uh, I'm concerned that uh, some of our own internal wounds between us and our other partners, we must heal some internal wounds because we cannot go forward unless we have a full deck. And if the wounds are there, we begin to lose our spirit. Uh, a and T, bless my school. We celebrated a month ago uh, uh, 50 years since the sit-ins at the at the Woolworths, and yet there was an African American mayor woman, Mrs. Johnson, became the first African American mayor in that city, and there are 10,000 students on that campus eligible to vote. And the election day, 200 voted, and she lost by 900. So our, the, 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 the hope coming out of our balloon is the fact that so, in some sense, the appeal today is for the president to hear our appeal to revive the enthusiasm and the hope and the unity. Now, part of this politic thing today, on your point about coalition, what links us, why did Dr. King call it poor people's campaign and not black campaign? Why in that last staff meeting you had, there were whites from Appalachia, or where a coal miner dies every six hours a day, and Native Americans and some of Shaw Business Group from Southwest, and some Jewish allies from New York, and some blacks. Why? We, because he knew that if you had, if you isolate the agenda and don't wrap it tightly, it'll be shot down just on its very essence. So that today we need this. A poverty is expanding. There are more whites in poverty than blacks. Uh, when John came the hell of a black baby in his arm in Harlem, it was dismissed as he was trying to peel down power. When Robert came the hell of a white baby in his arm in West Virginia, in, in, in Appalachia, that baby's bloated belly and tears touched America differently. It was, the, it was a different response. It poverty, 40 million Americans are in poverty today. A million children go to school homeless every day. 50 million have no health insurance. 50 million more do not have catastrophic health insurance. 20 plus million are unemployed today. 
And so there is expanding poverty. We must address in a direct, direct way. 50 million Americans are food uh, insecure. That's to say that they cannot get three balanced meals a day. In our schools in most cities, 85% free meals a day, which means they deserve breakfast and dinner, not just lunch. So poverty is a big deal, which we must address. And that takes it beyond just blocking me the stimulus for that, but we don't have monopoly on poverty. Pre President Obama would say, though, Reverend Jackson, he's working on the health care issue. He's tried to do everything he could for black folk and all Americans, and Republicans have obstructed him in that process. That's what he would say. And he's correct, because they are operating there as obstructionists. No president has ever gone to a caucus like he did in Baltimore and faced them head on with the cameras rolling, and they, and they hit him. It was like, uh, it was like a, a snowflake on a hot stove. He just simply outthought them and made more sense. But they are the precondition, a pre-existing condition of tear his administration down. Then he came back and said, let's have five and five in the White House. A pre-existing condition, their, objection, their agenda is obstruction, not health care. And so there is, there is this issue uh, of, these, of, of resistance. Uh, my point, I'm trying to get to this, is that when I look at these cities, because there are some forces not on the table, but when uh, Gingrich came in in 94. He saw people like Kathy Hughes and Bob Johnson purchasing buying these radio stations. And you show me a Harold Washington, I'll show you a WBON. You show me a, 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 a Dave Dinkins, and I'll show you a WLIB. His first act was to stop the tax relief so blacks did not own in mass media. That was his first act. The second act was, watch this. In cities above 200,000, they cut off all urban transportation subsidy. Cities below 200,000, you get subsidy. That's the emerging suburbs under 200,000. So today you have 1,200 bus drivers and transit related off in Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, cutting one through the service in Atlanta, Georgia. We have been choked by a bill of 94. We must know that there's a, that cap got to be lifted. Secondly, uh, uh, Brother Tavis, if you cut off transportation, they're closing, we're about to move toward four day a week schools. You cut off transportation, cut off education. Cut off public housing, cut off public post offices, now cut off public health, that beyond the president himself, he is a, a petition between us and some forces that are very much trying to, they're trying to take the election back next year that they lost last year. My appeal simply this to us today. Why I think we should support the health care bill? Because that's on the table today. That's what the Black Caucus is fighting for today. Why? Because it's not only that 32 million more people have health insurance. It had, there are glaring omissions in that bill. The, the issue we must, I mean, insurance companies are, are taking us for a loop at this point, but if we win the bill, we can, we can have laws and stop them if we win. Uh, the hospital's $2,000 a day for a bed. We can take that on. Uh, pharmaceuticals, you, you get a, a medicine, $200 in Canada, $1,400 here. It affects us disproportionately. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying this, issue of expanding poverty, Racial disparities, a reconstruction plan bottom up, as in a war on poverty bottom up, and, and, and stop ex the blow the military budget. That was how I made the case to all of us today. We must rally behind that bill, because if that bill loses, if he loses this fight for the health care, we lose public education, public transportation, public post office, public option, and civil rights. So sometimes politics gets very particular. Was the bill, the stakes are higher than the bill. I said today, even as we jostle to get our positions clear, don't miss the politics, the health care, and obstructions in 2010. I'm coming, Angela, one second. Dr. Malvo.